what's up my people welcome back to the channel please leave a like on this video and if you can't see the like button click on the x on your right hand side and it will give you the option for like the video right and subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber as yet and click the top bell icon so you get notified when anything new is on the channel so people we are gonna kick it off with the crab vendor them done a ton right at hero circle seeing me see a very disturbing video with one vendor it's like say boy people me don't even know if to describe this and me can't say certain things for you so, so me i go use some other word instead of some of the words i want to really use you know what i mean this is downright nasty you see me i say and this woman feels so comfortable to do what she do in front of other people because other people did they you know and she had do what she had do right in front of them you know so that means it's a common thing for them to do them nastiness around this, you know. And you know how much people tap this and buy them soup and them crab is a very popular spot, you know, my people. So if you don't know me I talk about, by now, this vendor run a hero circle where sell crab and soup. Somebody record her, I use a piece of tissue and I wipe her ASS. In at the stall where she they sell the soup and something. And other vendors down there, so people they behind her and she had do what she had do. And people no business. A one person record her and put out the video and it gone viral. Big up to that person there. Enough respect. That person they deserve a medal. Look after me see a next video with some people a discuss wagwan. Some people were selling, you know, Iglan people were there, you know, I discussed what going on and I say, them, nah, them never did have to put out the video. She just did a little ray, 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 run down panar and she did a clean up her. Oh, you have to clean up yourself, this so. Oh, you have to clean up yourself, this so. Oh, you have to even take down your clothes, this. Something like that happen, you find the nearest bathroom, Virgin. Right there, so we're selling a guan and you yeah, touch up, touch up the place. Come on, man, that are done right nastiness. And the people, them are bakar. So, right now, the Ministry of Health got locked down, down there. Which is right. Because if you did it and you don't see nothing wrong with that, something wrong with you, that means you're regular on a guan with the nastiness and nobody not say nothing. Big up to that person there. We send out the video. Mood a shake that person there and big woman thing because you know cannot do them nastiness there and I sell things where I go down people belly bridging come on man that a nastiness and uh, of the audacity the people them where I say them should have put her out and she just have an accident and she a clean up oh you fi clean up yourself this so oh you fi clean up yourself this so come on man come on bridging Yo, them not see that as nastiness. So that means there's something wrong with them people. And right now, me know say anybody will see this video, yeah. Nah, go there, so go buy nothing right now. So the Ministry of Health have to lock down, yeah, make them clean up the place and provide some bathroom and thing if none no did it. And clean water for wash them and and them something there. Bridging, you go one side if you have an accident, man. Oh, if you are clean up yourself. That means say, if you are do that, that's so. What about when you die a yard and I prepare certain things? People not go and eat from one bridging. So I go read the article, people. The Ministry of Health go lock down, down the man. Hero Circle Crab Vendor shut down by Ministry of Health. Representatives from the Ministry of Health are currently carrying out shutdown operations of the popular crab and corn stand along National Hero Circle in Kingston. Our news team understands the shutdown follows a now viral video on social media showcasing one of the vendors carrying out unsanitary practices. More details soon. People, don't get me wrong, you know. Me understand, say, are them people your livelihood, you know. You see me, I say, but the video bad, you know. The video bad enough, people. You see me, I say, but more make it worse for me. I when a next vendor, I go say, she um, mess up herself while she a drive already, I go home, and she have to do whatever she have to do. And then she has say, the woman just mess up herself and she a clean up herself. Like say, nothing at all don't wrong with what the woman do. You see me, I say, 
if she did come out and I bash the woman and I said she shouldn't do that, okay then, Missy said, boy, on a clean and sanitary. But when you yeah, defend that, look where the woman they write in at the place where she sell the things them. And come on, man, a, a, a feces that you yeah, deal with, you know, around food where people are eating a virgin. Come on, man. Some hopes of them just put in some regulations and make the place more presentable and sanitary. You see what I say? So people can feel comfortable again for buy back there. You see me? So people, leave your comment in the comment section. Right? And we are going to move on, people. So, the first thing you know, the second thing I should say, court order medical evaluation for alleged attacker in BB Cook School beating case. So the youth who do the beating up, them want evaluate him. Send him to a psychiatrist to see if something wrong with him. You understand? The St. Elizabeth Parish Court has ordered that the 16-year-old B.B. Cook high school student who is accused of beating his schoolmate unconscious is to receive a professional medical evaluation. The examination is to take place before the minor's next court appearance on November 17. The court made the order on Wednesday following an application by Hopton Marshall, the attorney for the grade 11 student. During the proceedings, it was disclosed that the complainant who was hospitalized following the savage incident is still recovering at the University Hospital of the West Indies. Additionally, Marshall made an application for disclosure of documents from the prosecution as there are a number of statements which are still outstanding. The accused school boy was charged last weekend with the assault occasion in grievous bodily harm after he reportedly punched and kicked the complainant, a grade 9 student, into unconsciousness while both were at, the, at their St. Elizabeth Bay school. He was offered bail on Monday. Reports indicate that the attack in which the defendant allegedly punched the younger boy in both eyes and kicked him in the head happened after the complainant reportedly stepped on the older student's shoe while they were collecting their cell phones at a security post on the school compound. The 14-year-old complainant was subsequently caught in a viral video being carried to a doctor's office in junction by five other schoolmates. He was admitted to the Mandeville Regional Hospital in Manchester before later transferred to the UHWI for further treatment, including a CT scan. The incident has sparked public outrage. Prime Minister Andrew Olness has commended the five boys who assisted the complainant. So people, we just want to send love and light to both parties. You know what I mean? We just want to send some healing energy to the victim, you know what I mean? And we want to send some love also to the defendant. We just hope him learn a valuable lesson. We are going to change him outlook upon life and know say, yo, think before you act, you know what I mean? And certain things can affect your life forever, you know what I mean? So let me know what you guys think, right? So we are going to move on, people. So the thing when we share with you guys yesterday about one taxi driver, we get caught up and him drop out. And I tell you, say, there was not any official article about what happened. I have the article here now, so I'm going to share that with you guys. Right? Kabi, S-H-O-T, and him drop out, right? By G-U-N men posing as passengers. Taxi operator Hector Titapul Lee was GUN down in his vehicle at Bay Farm Road in Waterhouse about 9.30 a.m. on Wednesday. Senior Superintendent of Police Kirk Ricketts, head of the St. Andrew Saw Division, indicated that the 46 year old taxi operator from a Seaview Gardens address DIED on the spot. Preliminary information is that men aboard the motor car posing as Passengers opened fire on him just about the vicinity of Bay Farm Road. He was SHOT to the head and upper body. The investigation is still in the early stages as the unit is trying to understand what happened and why it happened, he said. 
There was no obvious signal to point to any particular motive, but it does appear that he was targeted. One road operator who appeared on the scene lamented on how his colleague met his demise. Me get a call, say Tyrone DEAD, and me couldn't believe. Me say, one more taxi man. A long time, him a run taxi until him have him own fleet a car on the road. We don't work right now because him DEAD in the line of duty and all the taxi man them feel away. Lines of taxi were parked on both sides of Bins Road near to the gruesome incident. Gloomy face taxi operators watch in despair as police car down the scene. One of Lee's relatives said that a couple of years ago, Lee's two brothers DIED violently. All of my relatives DIE violently. Me no know none of them were SICK and drop out, the person said. So the person I say, the taxi brother, him have two other brother were drop out and them drop out violently. Seeing and him say, fame family them, him no know none of them were sick and drop out. A be a violent way them drop out. And so me I say, him, him run taxi in, the, in this area. He is well known because he has been running taxi more than 25 years and good with everybody. So me don't know, me don't have a reason as to why them K-I-L-L him said another teary eyed and looker. Lee was remembered as a good citizen even by police personnel on the scene. Residents said that he is an early worker and goes home early known by many but doesn't associate extensively edied leaving seven children including three adult males who openly wept for their father and tried to console each other everybody rate him him love him little drinking and play him son in a him car as you can see one relative said pointing at the vehicle where Lee's B-O-D-Y lay in his B-L-O-O-D. The relative also told our news team, I don't think it's robbery because he has everything on him still. Jaja. So people, taxi work, a very dangerous work to begin with, you know what I mean? So maybe a mix up or whatever, me don't know. You see me, but R.I.P. to him and condolences to his family you see me i say so we are gonna move on people and we are gonna share some new things about the beaches thought something the case was go on right so let me start off with that one here kind of know me always uh, update you guys with the goings of the trial right beaches thought trial autopsy details grizzly k-i-l-l-i-n-g of wife tony mcdonald why people them deal with our bilious me not like the autopsy report of the examination of the body of Tonya Hamilton McDonald suggests the businesswoman suffered a gruesome and horrific DEATH. Judge, Mistress McDonald was the wife of Portland businessman Everton Beachy Stout McDonald. Beachy Stout and another man, Oscar Barnes, are on trial for her MURDER in July 2020. On day 5 of the trial Wednesday, the court heard the details of the autopsy on the body of the woman affectionately called Miss Mack. We are advising you that the details are distressing and ask that you exercise discretion. The body of Tonya Hamilton McDonald was discovered on Monday, July 20, 2020 on the Tailington Main Road in Portland. Her throat was C-U-T and her car set ablaze. Based on the details of the autopsy report, her death was horrific. The pathologist report that she was STAB at least 10 times. She suffered wounds to her neck, chest, breast and back. Her right lung was punctured. It collapsed. The STAB wounds to her chest were muscle and bone deep tearing through her chest wall and tissue and wound to her NECK was 11 centimeters long and 6 centimeters wide. Her trachea was also punctured. The pathologist report that the wound to her trachea was so deep it was clear the weapon hit her spinal column. Having suffered multiple STAB wounds which the pathologist found sent her into shock and caused massive hemorrhaging leading to her DEATH. 
Antonia Hamilton McDonald's body was set on FIRE inside her car. Her body was charred. 90% of it was burnt. In a particular gruesome detail, her chest cavity was said to be so badly burnt that it was exposed. Mistress McDonald body was identified by her sister. So people, you see some of the words them, me can't to call them. At least me can't call them too often. You know what I mean? So I saw me have to deal with them some of the time. So now mind me when me I break up the words them, you see it? So let me move on. The seven member jury listen intently as the registrar read out the grisly details in open court. After the reading, the foreman asks whether he and his member uh, would be allowed to see pictures to better understand the wounds Mistress McDonald suffered. The jury was instructed by the judge not to anticipate evidence as they would be shown any evidence relevant to the case. The trial will resume at 10 Thursday morning, at which time the prosecution is expected to call its second witness. So people, I'm going to go to everything in a man because there's more. You see me? So I'm going to find the Alright, so I'm going to read up the one here. Witness say Beatrice Stout offered $3 million to M-U-R-D-E-R, his wife, after begging for work. The convicted, um, the convicted man who said he was contracted by Everton Beatrice Stout McDonald to M-U-R-D-E-R, his wife, has testified that he was offered the job after begging for work in the businessman supermarket. McDonald and his co-accused Oscar Barnes are currently on trial for the M-U-R-D-E-R of his wife, Tonya, Tonya a 32-year-old businesswoman in July 2020. Devon Lynn Minot, Denver Lynn Minot, otherwise called Bubbler, told the Home Circuit Court this morning that on his second meeting with Beachy, he asked him for a job to offload goods from delivery trucks. However, he said McDonald replied, "Me have a better work for you. That is when he take out a phone from his pocket. He then go onto his phone, show me a lady on the phone and say, I want you, I want her D-E-A-D. Recounted Minot, who is a witness for the prosecutor. Minot, who said he had never seen the woman before, testified that he told Beachy that he could not carry out the act as he had never KILL before. However, the Portland businessman demanded a price. He said, I say, big man, me cannot do it. I don't know how to do them thing there. The witness testified, adding that Beachy offered him $3 million to which he agreed. Minot broke down in tears as he gave his testimony. People, you see where money can cause, you see where lack of money can cause, Judge, the man even crying out court, him regret what him do, but because them bribe him with the money, Judge, so uh, him get sentenced already, you know, people, him get sentenced to 19 plus year, you know, and him turn evidence from beach is you know. See, the partially burned body, of McDonald's wife was found with its throat, S L A S H E D, otherwise C U T, in her car, which had been set ablaze along a deserted road in C4 in Sherwood Forest in Portland on July 20, 2020. Minot had pleaded guilty to Tony as M U R D E R later that year and is serving near 20 years prison term. He is the second witness for the prosecution. So, people, this woman will come down come marry the man there with him Oscar Barnes. Me sorry for she because the man will actually do the K I L L I N G and him turn evidence from beachy stout. So as me said before, me not hear none I witness them call Oscar Barnes name. So it look like say them not have no evidence upon him. So him know say him a go free up. That's why he married the woman. You see me? But Beach is out of the one where if him feel like say boy, he might get sink too deep, maybe he might go drag down Oscar Barnes with him. That may I say, right? He is the second witness for the prosecution. Minot, in an, in an statement, 
had reported that McDonald promised to pay him $3 million to M-U-R-D-E-R, his wife, but that he subcontracted another man to the K-I-L-L-I-N-G. So people, this man, a contract man for do dirt, you know, and a subcontract, the same boy people, me I tell you, this man, him deserve to go down. I don't nah lie, him deserve to go down for him do. Him dash for him two wife them you know two and a one wife you know people two wife the man dash way him deserve to go down man and at the right man i send him down because of the man when him give the con- i force him force the man to take up the contract you know guy man go beg him look work you know pe- I so- yo you see enough of them man here with money i saw them joke enough of the look of you with them you know you see me people Boy, may I tell you, yo, no be careful out there, man. No make nobody use no money and jaw no out. And enough man turn fish because of this too, you know. Them want an honest living, but the person where them go to open to help them out, that the person they lead them down a wrong path. You see? So me not wrong this youth here to testify against him. You see me? So people leave your comment in the comment section security guard k-i-l-l in motor vehicle collision people want to take time and drive and ride upon the road a security guard d-i-e-d as a result of injury he sustained after the motorcycle he was driving collided with a motor car in little london westmoreland on monday afternoon the deceased has been identified as 22 year old renardo of a little beer westmoreland address Reports are that about 2.40 p.m. he was driving his motorcycle on the Little London Main Road when he collided with a Toyota Carola motor car traveling in the opposite direction. He sustained injuries and was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced. The Negril police are investigating. So to all of the people them where I use up the road, where I use a vehicle on the road and I take time and drive, Take time and ride, please. No, you know, no, yes, for each way you go. Better you late than you don't reach at all. You see me, I say. So, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. So, people, a principal of a, where I say, a prep school, them try to dash away. And yes, me say, her is a woman, people. Them go for her this morning and she have to take away herself, right? Principal of St. Richard's Early Childhood Education Center targeted in GUN attack. St. Richard Early Childhood Education Center on Red Hills Road in St. Andrew is appealing to parents to collect their children following a S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G incident involving the principal this morning. Head of the St. Andrew North Police Superintendent Sharika Service says the principal was the target of the attack. Shaja. There was a S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G incident and we believe that she was the target but she was not S-H-O-T and injured. Service told our news team. The S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G took place on Sunrise Crescent off Red Hills Road as the principal was reportedly about to head to work. It's alleged that the attack was carried out by men on a motorcycle. The school is urging parents and guardians to collect their children. In light of the attempt on the LIFE of the principal this morning, please be advised that school ends at noon today, said a notice from the school. We continue to pray for the safety of all our teachers, parents, and students be safe. The St. Richard Primary School has also suspended class for the day. Both institutions are located on the same property. So people, you see Red Hills Road, our dangerous place. A regular things go on. But a female teacher, I wish she could have involved in her. I wish she could have done so. So, you know what I mean? She have to give thanks to why she left with her LIFE and them never take it. So she have to know what she has to do moving forward. You see me? So let me know what you guys think 
in the comment section. So we are going to move on, my people. Body found in bushes in St. Elizabeth. Police are probing the MURDER of a man whose body was found in bushes on the Alpart Main Road near the Manchester St. Elizabeth border on Thursday. His identity has not yet been ascertained. A we run a one place that in a people. Preliminary reports suggest that residents heard loud explosions on Wednesday night before stumbling on the man's body on Thursday morning in bushes. The now deceased had what appeared to be G U N S H O T wounds. Police detectives carried on off the road up to early afternoon on Thursday. So this look like say. I carry them, carry him, go around there. Go take him three points. So, to all of the youths, them, wanna be careful. Because it's enough of the time when a man get dirt. Enough of the time of the same friends, them, where him do wrongs with. Take him three points. You see me? So, people, you have to know what I do. And allow certain things alone. You know what I mean? So, let me know what you guys think. So we are going to go over in the parish of Clarendon, you know, people. See? And this young youth, yeah? Boy, may I tell you, them young youth, yeah? Them different nowadays, people. 21-year-old serial S-H-O-O-T-E-R slapped with 22 charges at 21, you know, people. A 21-year-old construction worker who was held in connection with several S H O O T I N G incidents and also Dashway that occurred between December 2022 and July 2023 in Clarendon and Manchester has been arrested and slapped with 22 charges. So, people, from December 2022 to July 2023, this man do over 21 crime in my 21 you know and during that space of time they're not even one year him involving a 22 crime where the police them know about just a time period there them look at you to your belly as people may i tell you dnj grant of belfield district manchester and canaanites maple and clarendon has been charged with let me tell you no M U R D E R two counts conspiracy to commit M U R D E R two counts wounding with intent two counts S H O O T I N G with intent unauthorized position possession of a prohibited weapon four counts unauthorized possession of ammunition five counts using a machine to commit a felony six counts the Manchester police have reported that Grant first S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G result in the K-I-L-L-I-N-G of 21-year-old Sonil Moshet, yeah, otherwise called Shiner Construction Worker of Comfort District, Manchester, on Thursday, December 8, 2022, about 4 p.m. On the aforementioned date, Moshet was S H O T. D to D E A T H allegedly by him in Kendall District in the parish. 44 year old Navlin Matthews, otherwise called Catherine, a chef of New Green District, Manchester, was reportedly S H O T and K I L L and a man injured when reportedly attacked by him in their community on Friday, March 3. Reports are that Matthews and the man were walking along the roadway when they were reportedly pounced upon by him and three other armed men. They opened GUN fire on both parties, hitting them multiple times before escaping in the area. The injured person were transported to hospital where Matthews was pronounced and the injured man treated. According to the police, Grant reportedly struck again at a plaza in Mandeville on Monday, March 6, where it was reported that two security guards were attacked by three men, one of whom was armed with a an GUN. 
The attackers then restrain and demand money from one of the two guards. The demands were not met. A tussle ensued and the attackers fled after the armed man opened G-U-N-F-I-R-E. The police said Grant's last victim was SHOT and injured on Monday, July 31 at his home in Top Coffee Grove District in the parish. The man reported that he was at home about 12.50 a.m. when he was attacked by him who was armed with a G-U-N. A fight ensued during which the man was SHOT several times. He ran and was later assisted to hospital where he was treated. Following an operation, he was arrested on Wednesday, August 2, in Westmoreland in relation to a separate incident. He was later handed over to the Manchester police where charges were laid against him on Wednesday, October 4. A court date is being arranged. So people, you see where this a little youth do? In a short space of time, that's how the police them know about. What about what them don't know about? Judge us so people, be careful how they like, comment and subscribe.